Many people spend their lives in a state of almost permanent dissatisfaction. They are maybe looking for some purpose or they may have given up hope that there is some purpose for them and they're just surviving mm -hmm. or making a living. Or caught up in the doing. Caught up in the doing, uh, in the stress of it. Right. And so usually when we talk about purpose, when people talk about purpose, they think of purpose in terms of future. Where am I going? What am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. What's the direction I'm going? What is my goal? The goal that I want to achieve? And that, of course, is there. It has its place, but I call that the outer purpose. More fundamental than the outer purpose is what most people usually overlook, and that is the realization that what matters most is finding your inner purpose. Purpose. Wow. Purpose is one of those things that I have been recently struggling with, pivoting with purpose. Welcome back. So that was an interview with Oprah and Eckhart Tolle, if I'm saying his name correctly. And it resonated with me because I've been looking for a long time now about purpose. How do you find your purpose? Because I truly felt like I had found my purpose. And if I'm completely honest, I truly do think I am living in my purpose. But it seems like those things kind of shift sometimes. So welcome back. This is Pivot with Purpose with me, Carla Vomeres. Now I'm bringing this in a state of fear. I am sitting right here in front of a microphone telling myself, am I even ready to be doing what I'm doing right now? I don't know if I am, but we'll find out. I'm here and I, I just have to get get it out. I have to put it out there because I said it was coming and I'm the one that's stopping myself from moving forward. So Living on purpose, as I define it, is a way to become aware that we were all created to serve some specific function in life. Now, some of these purposes might be a little weird, lofty. They attract accolades of the world, like you have to have a certain degree, which I have and I do nothing with. Some of these purposes um, may be down to earth, such as raising a child for us mothers or teaching, engaging in some other activity that may not be acknowledged by society, but is still significant. And I think that resonates with me. And I don't know about you as a mother, maybe a stepmother, maybe a teacher. Sometimes society doesn't recognize these accolades that you have because they're not a big degree or millions of dollars, right? Well, the pursuit of of your life is to come into that purpose. And within this journey, I think I want to take you with me into finding my inner purpose and really refining it. And every time that I still have to pivot in my purpose, I want to do it in purpose, right? I don't want to pivot and make changes in my life just because I want to make sure that I am aligned with who I am and what my values are. So again, welcome to the first episode of 2022 of Pivot with Purpose. Now, I do want to go over, you know, three ways to discover your purpose and four mistakes that can keep you from finding that purpose. But before that, I want to go into some 2021 struggles that will help me conquer walking by faith and not by sight. I did a vision board recently and my big words on it were walking by faith and not by sight. This was something that uh, the day before Thanksgiving, I believe it was, November 23rd, if I am not mistaken, I had a very, very big um, shift in my life. So 2021 was a, a year of so many, right? So let's, let's just go to the beginning, actually. Let's go to the beginning. January, boom, right starting the year, I had baby Psalm, you know, 17 days into the month, then spent 11 days in the hospital I had to leave the hospital alone because my fiance wax had to go back to work. So, you know, 2021 started with like a very high and a very low. Then just a few months later, we moved to New Jersey. I had to pack up my newborn, pack up my daughter, pack up my life, everything that I know that I feel comfortable in, and move to an unknown state with no family, really no friends. Although I am so close to New York City, it's still like I'm in the middle of nowhere, and I have no no help here, right? So I had to find babysitters. I had to find new everything. I'm just alone. Then I had to pivot my business. I, I said to you guys before, if you've listened to previous episodes, 
when I was, you know, it was still shit, I'm 30 and now pivot with purpose. I feel like I really truly am living in my purpose. I feel like I thrive in what I'm doing, but life just does what life does, right? And it brings new bumps. It makes us uh, perceive life differently, events differently, people. So you change and you pivot. Um, and then like I started saying, November, through all my challenges through the year, it feels like everything's, you know, kind of going right. We find out that we're having a baby in October. Um, I was two months pregnant and I thought that this was just, okay, let's do it. We didn't stop it necessarily. Uh, I wasn't ready, but when are you really ready? We knew that we wanted to, right? And then I'm here at home. Something fell off. Something felt like it just wasn't right. And I said to myself, maybe I should call my friend uh, who was now my doula. And I said, I'm spotting a little bit and I'm cramping. And she's like, well, it's nothing to be alarmed of, but maybe you should go into the hospital anyway. Now Wax was had COVID at the time and he was isolating upstairs from us. But I said to him, I don't care. I will put two masks on, get in this car, drive me to the hospital now something is wrong and I don't know what it is and we need to like get there before something happens. So it's a day before Thanksgiving. Apparently that hospital is slammed. You couldn't really see many people outside because I was the only one, but apparently inside it was busy. So they're making me wait, making me wait. I'm freaking out a little bit, but I'm trying to stay calm. And all I kept saying myself was walk by faith, not by sight. Um, About an hour and some change later, I feel wet. And I'm like, what's going on? So I run to the bathroom. I'm like, I think I just peed myself. Totally possible. Maybe a little bit. I'm nervous. And when I go in, there's blood. All, like a lot of blood. Just straight through my sweatsuit. And I said, oh my God, something is wrong. So I run to the front and I'm telling them, you guys need to get me to the back now. Something is happening. So they bring me to the back and they tell me to get undressed. But again, nobody comes. No one's really coming. Now it's been like 20, 30 minutes. And I'll never forget her, this sweet lady. She must have been the janitor. She was cleaning some of the rooms and she stops by and she hears me crying. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out really bad. And she's like, what's wrong? I had removed my clothes and sitting on that bed was a, what seemed like just a, a large blood clot. But when I'm, when I'm looking at it, I know that I'm looking at more than just blood clots. It looks like tissue. It looks like something. And I don't want to believe it, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, this is, something is wrong again, because I felt it coming out. And she's telling me, she's like, someone's coming, you know, are you okay? And she sits there, she's like, I will pray for you. I wait and I tell Wax, I don't care what's what you're going through. I don't care what COVID you have. What, I need you here. I need you here. It's been 10 days. We had already taken a test and it was negative and at home test. I said, please, I need you here. I call my friend and I said, Hey, call him. I need him. So finally he comes, the people come, they start doing some tests. I mean, they take me over to, they're going to take me over to the ultrasound. And again, I'm freaking out. And he's trying to tell me, just relax, just relax. It'll be okay. You're fine. Everything is fine. And I'm thinking, no, no, no. But why am I thinking so negative? I don't know. Maybe because of what I saw. So I tell him I have to run to the restroom. I have to go pee. And when I go to the restroom, as soon as I sit down, I just feel this uh, probably about half the size of my fist comes out of me and I see it. And I knew exactly what I was looking at. And I just look, I froze and I come back. I knew what I saw. They take me over to the ultrasound. They do what they do. Then they come back and give me a pregnancy test, a urine pregnancy. And like, oh, it's positive. And everyone's telling me, you know, hold on to hope, hold on to hope. I know what's going on. I'm on Google, you know, which you shouldn't be. I don't recommend. But I know what I saw. But I kept telling myself, walk by faith, not by sight. And they tell me to go home for two days because they can't confirm that it's a miscarriage. But I knew better. And I sat at home and I questioned why. And I was just guilty. Like, what was it? I had a UTI, maybe the UTI medication. I had a yeast infection. Maybe it was the yeast infection medication. Maybe it's the fact that I drank some elderberry. Maybe I just wasn't ready. Maybe I was thinking negatively about this pregnancy for in, in the beginning. And I was scared. And that's what, you know, made it go away. That's why this happened. But again, it was supposed to be in my purpose because after that happened, there was this moment when Wax was able to understand that hormones, <laughs> this guy is, is a mess, 
But he's like, hormones? Oh, you can't, you can't help those, huh? Now, we're almost a year into me postpartum. And when I would mention hormones, he thought that it was something that I could control. I don't, I really don't know what he thought it was, but his mom explained this to him. He went home to his mom and his mom told him her stories of her miscarriages and what that feels like, the physical toll that it takes, the emotional toll that it takes. And he had this compassion for me that I don't think he would have ever had if it wasn't for that, right? We became intimate in a different type of level. And it also let me understand that just men sometimes can't understand what we go to and we can't force them to. So 2021 pivoted me again, forced me to live within my purpose and really realize what is real. What means something? What should I really be pursuing? So when I look at some of this, um, T.D. Jakes, which... I love and adore, you know, Bishop is just that guy, had a an interview with Oprah and they talked about some of the mistakes that keep you from finding your purpose. And again, you guys are my friends and we're in our 30s. I'm about to be 35 this year, y'all. I started this podcast when I turned 30. So we're talking about five years ago. I was like, shit. I'm 30, I don't want to be here, where am I supposed to be? I'm in corporate, I'm unhappy. There's just all these things running through my mind. And now I'm thinking, what are some mistakes that I could be making? And one of them is the, but I love it mistake, right? And it says for a few years, I was, this is um, T.D. Bishop speaking. And he says, for a few years, I was involved in music. I was a choir director and I played the piano. I noticed that when a choir got ready to sing, people got more blessed out of me introducing the song and ta- and talking about the song than they did from the song itself. Gradually, I began to realize that the tail was wagging the dog. I love music to this day and I have fairly good understanding of music and theory and how they operate, but that's not why I'm here on earth. So there is some th- sometimes we love to do certain things We love to be in certain places or we might love to be with someone, but that is not why you're here. You might not be that person. You might not be that vessel for that. So you have to kind of shift with that. So he says, just because you admire something does not mean that it is your purpose. You have to find yours. Don't let it distract you from something that you should just be a hobby, right? Number two was, but that drives me crazy mistake. Usually when things drive us crazy, he says, we're taught to walk away or ignore them. But sometimes it can help to take a closer look. For example, if somebody does something incorrectly and their error drives you crazy, you shouldn't criticize the person. You should look at what our inability to tolerate their error can show us. What you cannot stand to see done badly is exactly where you should work. If you can't stand it when the church programs are done incorrectly or when the invitations are not sent out in time, if you want things in order, maybe you should consider working in that area of administration. So this is an example when I started podcasting, right? And I'm teaching myself how to podcast and I'm spending hours and hours of, you know, trial and error through audio and, you know, putting outlines together and launching and what works. I, it irks me. I promise, I kid you not. It irks me to see bad audio. It irks me to see bad graphics. It irks me to see people not really having a why or a clear understanding of who their podcast is supposed to be for or why they're even doing it. So I sat there and created a business. I made it my business to fix those things. I made it my business to help others in that area. And that is where I now thrive and love to do because although it's work and there are plenty of things about my business that I'm, I drag on because I don't like doing it, but when it comes to the strategy aspect of it, I love it. So other people might not be bothered by some of these things, but because you are, that is where your interest is. You need to recognize it and find that area of passion for you. Um, number three is, But my dad told me to. That's the third mistake. He says, sometimes your purpose may be totally opposite to the preparation of your life. It may be that you got a degree in one thing, but it's not fulfilling you because it's not the thing that you were really created to do. It may be that your family and friends have misdirected you to where they have and where they need you. So your education, your background, your circumstances, your job end up restricting you from finding your fulfillment. Listen, 
This is not church, and I am not a preacher, but give me an amen if you are sitting somewhere where you're like, right now, I got this damn degree. I'm sitting here, but he's cheering. I'm in this relationship, and this is not where I'm supposed to be. I am not fulfilled. I have that feeling within inside me that I'm not supposed to be here. I've been there. I sometimes am there with certain things. I'm creating certain graphics, and I'm like, I am pissed off that I'm doing this. Let me outsource this. I should not be doing this. So this happened to me with my accounting degree, right? I just felt like I was told you're a mom now. You need to get this degree. You need to go and work. You need to be in the workforce and be at home working nine to five. And that's what I was doing. And I hated every single second of it. So you have to have the courage to withstand other people's opinions and ideas and flow into your own purpose. That is really hard to do. It's really hard to identify that you're going in the wrong direction and that you're going into the mouth of a whale. You have to know when to redirect. You have to know when you are living a life that is not meant for you. And then the last mistake that we make when trying to find our purpose is the do something, just do anything mistake. So he says, the lives that we lead do not always lend time for inner reflection. We're so busy. We're so busy that we don't make space for prayer, for meditation. We don't take time to examine. We throw ourselves into this busyness so deeply deeply that we don't take time to pause and just think, to just be, to just reflect. So it can be hard at first to identify that internal heartbeat. And you know what? That's exactly what it feels like. It feels like this heartbeat that is just beating and you're just like, how can I get you out? Who are you? What are you doing? But recognizing that internal heartbeat determines what's going to give you fulfillment and gratification. This is um, an inward applause for every moment when you feel in harmony with yourself and when you hear it, let it be loud and clear or soft and slightly muffled. You're going to know exactly what it is and what you're meant to do. So these four mistakes, I can identify with every single one of them. I don't know about you, but I identify with every single one of them. And I want you to know that, you, you know, again, you're not alone. So what are some ways that we can discover our purpose? Again, pivot with purpose is a journey of mine and a journey of mine to take along with you. Like, I really want you to go with me. Y'all went with me when I was in corporate, when I really did had no idea where I was going. So today I have two children. Today I have an, a business. Today I have a fiance, soon to be husband, hopefully, <laughs> because COVID and life is really just kicking our butts and I'm, the, the wedding really has taken a back burner. So I want to take you guys through this so we can all find it ourselves. We're in our 30s, most likely. Maybe you might be in your 20s. Maybe you might be in your 30s. But I want us to find this together. I can't do it alone anymore. I'm one of those people that really, really try to just sit and deal alone. And I'll go into this rut, and then sometimes I'll show up on social media and really, really tell my feelings. But by that time, those feelings come, I have boiled over, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I didn't take time to really think this through. I didn't. But sometimes that's what makes it so raw, right? That I'm really in the thick of it while I'm going through it. So I had a meeting with my therapist, (laughs) And she's talking to me and she's like, hey, Carla, have you tried meditating? I swear she asks me this like every three months. And I'm like, ugh, that's why people shit. Literally is what I said to her. And immediately without hesitation, without hesitation, she goes, "Mm, it's actually black people shit too. (laughs) And it really is. When I say I don't want to meditate because it's white people shit, Ladies, ladies, I'm really doing saying it to deflect, to not put in the work. I'm really bullshitting when I say that because I know that meditation works. You know, there is a state where I have to just calm down, whether it's through prayer, whatever it is. I need to take those five minutes to just be with my inner self. And I don't, you need to be more in tune with your feelings. And right now I feel like there's so much noise. It is noisy. There is so much going on around me in my brain, in my phone. I can sit here right now in my office and it's quiet. Psalm's taking a nap. The dogs are outside, probably going through the garbage, but that ain't none of my business. And I'm sitting here and it's quiet. But it's so quiet that I turn on my phone. It's so quiet that my brain starts going to whatever argument I had with Wax recently, whatever struggle we might be having. And I'm going to now 
blow it out of proportion. I'm going to be like, hmm, he didn't call me this morning when he left the gym. Why didn't he call me? Is that different? The devil starts really, really working on me, right? Then I'm like, hmm, maybe look at yourself. You look a little fat today. Mm -hmm. You out of shape, girl. Them arms are never going to fit into that wedding dress. Um, Then I start looking around. I'm like, wow, this office is dirty. You can't even clean up. Maybe you should clean up. Hmm, I got a to-do list. Maybe I should work on this to-do list. Anxiety. Anxiety is killing me. Procrastination is killing me. The fear of the unknown is killing me. And although I have reached the state of I know that I'm living in my purpose, I am self-sabotaging. And if you are there right now, I invite you and I you know, urge you to join me and just making the step. Today is now the end of January. And I said I was going to drop this over almost two weeks ago and I didn't. And I went on social media and I'm like, fuck, I haven't done it. I'm scared. I don't know why I'm scared. I don't want to be in front of the microphone anymore. But I know that this podcast not only serves you, but more importantly, it also serves me. It serves me when I'm sitting here right now thinking about all that I'm going through, all of these feelings that I sit in the shower and I cry and I don't know why I'm crying or I'm stuck and I don't know why I'm stuck. Those feelings, I can let them out on this podcast. And then when I listen to other people talk about their feelings, at times I'm like, oh my goodness, she feels like I feel and I'm not alone. I have to learn how to navigate this space. And where I am today, I have a homework basically from my therapist. So I'm going to give you the homework as well. I'll pay for her. I'll give y'all what she gives me, right? (laughs) She says to me, because right now I am in the state of, I really don't know if it's depression and we didn't call it that. And I don't want to use that word. So, you know, freely, but I'm in a state where I'm just somber. I am numb. I am not moving. And if you guys listen to whatever she says, I had a, a big explosion, argument, disagreement, conversation, whatever you want to call it, with Wax about a situation that we were going was going on with Ayana um, at her dad's house. And again, I think that there were so many emotions that it might seem like it's worse than what it was. It was just the fact that I just kept communicating with the wrong person over there and I need to do what's best for my child. And it it just has to do with co-parenting. Really, it's all the adults more than the child. It's all an adult issue. So I don't want to move. I can't move. I don't want to have conversations. I just don't want to deal. And she said to me, you you have to re-strategize life. What is your new life strategy? And I said, what the hell is you talking about? I literally sat sat there quiet and she goes, your values are the ones that look different. It seems like your values have changed. It seems like your values have shifted. It seems like your values have pivoted. It seems like you have a different perspective in life. And I said, oh, I got to do some work, don't I? This is for the birds. But here I am. I have to do the work, which is what's pushed me to record today because I have work to do. I have to figure out what my new life strategy is, how I'm going to navigate it. And this can shift everything in my life again. This is going to shift relationships. This is going to shift business. This is going to shift me as a mother. This is going to shift my eating habits, my sleeping habits, my, my, my everything, because I need a new life strategy. And I'm about to be 35 years old. And I don't even know why I feel emotional. I think it's because I'm day three of my period plus all of this emotions in my in my brain. But y'all, it's time to re-strategize life. And it's funny because I called myself a podcast strategist, right? It's what I do. I strategize a podcast from beginning to end. And I give you, you know, like what you're going to keep going and doing at least for the next six months. And here I am now not being able to do it for myself. And this is when it's time to invest in yourself, right? And which is why I invest in a therapist that can help me um, figure this out for myself. So here I am about to do a brand new strategy for my life (laughs) because... 35 is coming and it's time to change. So we're back with finding uh, Pivot with Purpose, trying to find our purpose, finding your purpose. And one of the segments that we're going to be having within this show is Carla's Conundrum. And you're probably like, what in the hell are you talking about? Well, Carla's Conundrum is a question that I'm going to be asking myself or asking yourself, but I've asked myself this question while I'm here. And the question is, why do people feel the need to tell us what is our purpose? Why do people feel the need to tell us what we should be doing? 
I don't want to hear what you think I should be doing. Because a lot of times people are telling me what I should do because it's what they think they should have done and they never got to do. And they want me to do it now so they can see it flourish within someone else. But your purpose is not my purpose. Your passions are not my passions. Let me figure that out on my own. Stop telling me how I should think, what my values are. Stop telling me who I am. I am on that journey on my own. I am on that journey to figure out where I should be because every year, maybe every six months, every day, something is shifting, something is changing, something is making me perceive life and different things differently. So let me figure that out on my own. And for you, tell folks, thanks, but no thanks. I'm doing the work. And that is if you're actually doing the work. If you're just sitting there somber and I'm not moving, stuck in fear, you probably can't say that yet, but let them know, I- I'm aware of it. Give me a second. Thank you for your opinion, but it's, it wasn't necessary. It was not requested. I don't need it. It was unsolicited. So that is where we are right now with Pivot With Purpose. I am working really hard with this um fear that I'm experiencing with this. I I don't even know what to call it. Honestly, I don't even want to give it a name because I don't want to label it as anything other than I'm trying to figure shit out. And I no longer have that, that heavy set feeling of a new baby. You know, my boy's one, he he's walking, he's running. He's, his schedule is amazing. We have an amazing babysitter that comes over, you know, three, four times a week and helps me out so I can continue with my business. But one, know that Instagram and social media is a highlight reel. I post, I engage, but a lot of times I am not trying to engage or, or, or bring in that energy from social media. So if you feel like sometimes I'm not responsive, it's not because I don't want to. It's just because there's a lot of noise at the moment and I want to drown that noise out. I really, really do. So mamas, I feel you. Shit's hard. You know, we have kids. We have husbands that we're taking care of. And sometimes, most times, a lot of times, daily, actually, they don't know what the hell we going through. They can't feel it, but they're also going through their own shit too. So... I hope to see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in again. Although I I leave and come back, but I'm here. I'm here to stay. I have to be here. I have to make this happen because I am a podcaster. I am someone that's going to share their experience, not to help you and give you someone to relate to, but for myself. Because if I don't start letting this out of my chest, if I don't start putting it out there, I am going to drown within myself. I really do feel like I'm drowning. Wow. Aha. There we are. I'm here. I just said it. And I, I didn't have those words to tell my therapist. I feel like legitimately I'm drowning. So with y'all's help, I will continue to swim. I'm a good swimmer. I'm pretty strong. I'm a damn good swimmer. Actually, I did triathlons. I'm a good swimmer. So I'm swimming and I'm trying to come back up to the surface at the moment. And I will see you all next week. And um, have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you for staying with me throughout this show. I would love to hear your thoughts on this episode. Give me a follow on Instagram at Carla Bomeris and let me know what resonated with you. The most important gift that I can receive from you is your sharing of this episode with your family and friends and social media. And also when you leave a rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I'll see you next week. And remember that we are together on this journey of pivoting with purpose.